this is Tanner from Electronics123.com and this is a first of our how-to video series. In this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know about soldering to put together most of the kits that we sell at Electronics123.com. Um, basically I'll first go over some of the equipment that you need to have to, uh, to solder. Um, these can all be purchased on our website. Um, the first thing I recommend is a soldering iron and we got one here. This is a 25 watt soldering iron. Um, this is what I use for all my soldering. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, um, and they, they do the job. Uh, you don't want to go with anything that's much more powerful than 25 watts. I had a 40 watt at one point, and it was uh, it was too hot. It was damaging some of the components. Um, it's a good idea to have a soldering stand. Um, something to clean the tip of your soldering iron with. Uh, you don't want to get too much... Uh, forming on the end of the tip because it'll it'll wear it out faster and you, you know, it'll have dry joints and so on. Um, and also a good thing to have is a desoldering pump in case you make mistakes when you're soldering. And last and most certainly not least is uh, a good set of goggles or some kind of eye protection. Um, you know, if, if you have any air bubbles in your solder, uh, you can get popping and, and uh, it'll send droplets of solder. Uh, you definitely don't want to get any of that in your eyes. So that's an important thing. Yeah, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and work with one of our kits. This is a uh, K141 or CPS141 on our website. It's a multi-mode timer. Um, really cool kit. Check it out on our website. So, let's get started. Once you've prepared your workspace and have allowed your soldering iron to heat for 5 to 10 minutes, you're ready to begin soldering. The first thing you need to do is tin the tip of your soldering iron. To do this, you're going to apply a thin layer of solder to the tip. You do not want a droplet to form. If you get a droplet, clean the tip, but allow the shiny thin layer of solder to remain. Now, if we look at this board, I've, I've attached several components. I'm going to go ahead and solder this resistor that's connected here. What you want to do when you begin soldering is first you're going to apply the soldering iron to the work, and then you'll apply the solder. You do not want to apply solder to the soldering iron and then try and move that to the work. You'll end up with difficulty and you could get dry joints. So for this component, I'll just apply the heat. and You don't, don't want to apply it for too long, but a little bit doesn't, doesn't hurt. And then apply the solder. When I remove that, we see that we have a clean joint that looks good and will ultimately make a good contact. can move on to the next joint. Here's one here. If you end up with droplets on your soldering iron, it's always good to clean that. First apply the soldering iron and then the solder. So you're heating the work and then applying the solder to the work. You're basically melting the solder on the component or on the joint between the board and the component. If you make a mistake when you're soldering, and I have one right here, you can remove it by using a desoldering pump. Now desoldering pumps are fairly inexpensive and easy to use, and I can demonstrate one here. This is our desoldering pump. I think this ranges between one and three dollars, fairly inexpensive, but basically how it works is you press down on the plunger, and then you press the button when you want to pull up the solder. And I'll show you here, I'll clean the contact on this board. Basically, compare this. And all you're going to do is heat the solder, apply this, and press the button, and the contact is clean. I can now put a new component through that, and then re-solder it. Many kits contain integrated circuits, or ICs. These small chips are very sensitive to heat. It is important that when you attach these chips to the board, you use a socket, because the, the heat from the soldering iron will damage the chip. So you attach the socket first, solder all of the pins down to the board, and then allow it to cool before connecting the IC chip. Sometimes you end up with contact points 
that are very close to one another. It is important that you don't allow two contact joints, two solder joints, to touch one another. When they do, this is called a short circuit. A short circuit allows electrical current to run in places where it shouldn't, and ultimately doesn't allow the circuit to complete its objective.